Everything has an audience, no matter how big or small. You can make a movie about a piece of doodle that somehow gained sentience and now it wants to travel all over the world to learn how to be a Shaolin monk. Yeah, it's a weird concept, but there are people who will take interest in that and will want to watch it. Even if you yourself hate the idea of that type of narrative in the slightest, there are other people who will pay money out of their own pocket to go see it and then tell their friends about it. The same thing applies to hood movies and ratchet reality TV shows. Love them or hate them, these shows have millions of people in fan base. And see, that is one of the main reasons for why the industry pushes that type of stuff out now and will continue to push it out in the future. Now, the problem isn't necessarily the product itself. Well, technically, it is. But... The real issue is the lack of a counter narrative. The lack of material that shows other things besides this. And we cannot leave out the fact that a lot of us tend to play a pretty big role in this. Hear me out real quick. Now, I remember seeing this particular post a few years ago, right? Sometime during the late 2010s. And I remember looking at this and just thinking, I don't think she can possibly be any more right if she tried to be. Now, just for a heads up, what I'll be talking about is mainly an issue amongst black people and the topic of black media. And I want to make it extremely clear that I am in no way, shape or form making negative generalizations about the entire collective of black people on the planet. Even though I know some people are going to ignore that I said that, but whatever. Everything that I'm saying only applies to those who it applies to and them alone. I also know that there's a lot of people who ain't going to like what I have to say because oftentimes the stuff that needs to be said the most is the hardest stuff to hear, especially if it applies to you. But like I said, I'm not speaking in general terms and whatever I say, it applies to whoever it applies to. Nothing more nothing less. Now I did already make a video about this topic but this is more of a revision to that. So a lot of what I said then will be repeated here because I want to make sure I can cover every possible point that I can think of because I want to make sure that this is hopefully the last time that I ever make a rant video about this topic. Now that that's out the way Let's get to it. By now, pretty much everyone is aware of the whole representation argument and the conversation on why there needs to be more diversity in shows and movies. Everywhere you look, you'll see multiple viewpoints. Some say it should definitely be a thing. Some say it shouldn't. Some say diversity makes sense if it matches the narrative. And then there's the dismissive version, which is doesn't matter who's on screen, just shut up and watch the movie. And so on and so forth. Another argument is about the type of material that gets put out there regarding certain groups of people and how they're portrayed on screen. That's from the types of stories, the genres they're in, the character archetypes, the stereotypical caricatures, and a bunch of other things. When it comes to black people, much of the frustration comes with the stereotypical characters, the surplus of hood movies, dysfunctional families, dysfunctional relationships, not seeing enough black people in certain genres like horror and sci-fi and fantasy, the lack of black characters in stories at all, the lack of black characters in a story that actually should have a bunch of black people in it, but for some reason don't. And when it comes to the animation side of things, it's pretty much the same things, but in addition to you uniform character designs or whitewashing the characters, the lack of black phenotypical features, racist depictions of black people, black characters being turned into animals for most of the story, and a plethora of various issues that get brought up from time to time. Pretty much to the point that I could spend probably an hour and some change trying to name them all. But for years, cats have been calling out the various problems that exist within media. But see, I've personally noticed that the amount of discussions about solutions to these problems are significantly lower than the amount of discussions complaining about them. One of the most common complaints we hear is that there aren't enough black characters in such and such story, or that most, if not all the characters are white people. But then I usually look at the stories that they're talking about and I ask the question, who do you think is writing these stories? You look at the authors of stuff like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Aragon, Harry Potter, Dragonheart, and you see that these are all white people. So I figure, yeah, of course the story is gonna be full of people who look like them. I don't care how much you think you're gonna personally detach yourself from your work. Even an isekai anime that takes place in an obviously medieval European setting will have a few Japanese characters who are just there. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure started out in England. Funny how it eventually made its way to Japan by the time part three came around so they could be not one, not two, but three Japanese members of the Joestar family. Even Giorno in part five, born and raised in Italy his whole life, coincidentally has a Japanese mother. I'll take it a step even further than that. In the Stillborn Run universe, Johnny Joestar gets an interest to go to Japan at the end of the story. And then guess what? He ends up getting married to a Japanese woman, they have a child together, and once again, the Joestar bloodline extends into Japan. See, everyone puts themselves into their own work 
to some degree, or at least most authors tend to do so. The characters, or at least most of the characters, will definitely be a reflection of the author writing them in some way, shape, or form, which usually tends to also include physical appearances, especially if you want to take into account the setting of the narrative and the group of people who would be the most likely to appear in that setting. Now, if a story takes place within a racially diverse melting pot type of environment like the US or South America, or it's set in an environment that's not at all based on anything in the real world, so literally any group of people can just appear there because the author said so. Well, hell, let's even say that the story spans across various land masses with people of different racial and ethnic groups like One Piece. Then, and only then, does it make sense for there to be a multitude of characters who look different from each other race-wise just appearing all over the place left and right. But if a story is taking place in a setting that is largely homogenous, if not completely homogenous, then it's pretty weird to expect there to be a super racially diverse cast of characters just for the sake of diversity itself. And to say, well, it don't matter. Every single story should be super diverse regardless of the narrative or the setting. That's not only a reach, but it's stupid. Because at this point, it becomes less about representation and it's more about people who want to project their own ideologies onto an IP that they don't own. It's more about wanting self-insert type characters rather than actual diverse characters. Not to mention many of the people who share this mentality only want things to happen one way, but never the other way around, which is of course nothing short of hypocritical. Black Panther doesn't have to be racially diverse because it takes place in Wakanda. Now yeah, Wakanda is a fictional country just like Zamunda from Coming to America is also a fictional country, but nonetheless, they are set in Africa. And you know who comes from Africa? People who look like this. I mean, do you really think it's a coincidence that the overwhelming majority of anime and manga characters happen to be Japanese? That the majority of Manhua characters happen to be Korean? That the majority of Manhua characters happen to be Chinese? I mean, is it really that hard to fathom that a writer would have a story that's filled to the brim with characters who tend to look just like them? Now you have creatives like Taito Kubo and Hirohiko Araki, Shinichiro Watanabe, and others like them who tend to put diverse characters into their works for no other the reason other than because they felt like it because they wanted their stories to be like that not because they felt pressure to do so because some blue check mark tried to insist it upon them like it's their story not to get brownie points on the bird app not to check off boxes that's the reason why these characters feel like actual characters like they're organic parts of the story like they were intended to be there but at the end of the day what creatives do with their narratives is their choice and only their choice you got some people who ask questions like how come it ain't no black people in this as if it was something that was promised in a contract that the other party is not honoring. Then there's, well, Japan has so many games with white protagonists, how come they don't make games with black protagonists? We go extra hard for them and give them all the support and we elevate their stuff and we make it more popular? Well, first off, that's what fans of something tend to do in the first place. They support the things that they enjoy. And second of all, you went above and beyond for someone that you had no obligation to do so of your own volition. It's not something that was, that was asked of you, that was begged of you. It wasn't something that you were forced to do. No, you went that hard for them because you wanted to but after all these years you mean to tell me you got motherfuckers who still haven't learned yet that they're still shocked and appalled that the energy that they've given is not reciprocated in the same capacity not just with this but with pretty much any big situation see the expectation to see you from people who aren't you is where you got the game fucked up at you think because you let somebody play with your toys that they're gonna let you play with their toys you think because you're willing to go out of your way to go above and beyond to elevate somebody else and build their empire for them that they're just gonna be itching and begging for you to let them return a favor. I mean, we always bring up how much we do for everyone else, how much we enhance everyone else's shit, when in reality, at least from my viewpoint, that is not the flex a lot of us like to think it is. In fact, it's actually pretty damn sad. Do you also find it mystifying that I keep on giving and get nothing in return? To do all of this for everyone else and their stuff, but for some reason never thought or maybe didn't care enough to turn that energy inward and elevate your own shit so that that stuff can be great too. As opposed to constantly begging someone else to make you a part of their narrative. Especially when considering that you're begging someone who had no interest in doing that in the first place. It's honestly crazy how not all, but a lot of blurs are more interested in being or having a black version of something else rather than their own thing. Got all this mythology and all this folklore, all this culture just itching to be creatively utilized and made popular enough to be the next big thing. But instead of tapping into that realm, so many would rather try to be the black version of someone else. So instead of trying to elevate the Orishas and other African pantheons, with the exception of Egypt, of course, into the same level of popularity as other pantheons, cats would rather just have black versions of Greek and Celtic and Norse and Japanese mythological characters. And it also seems like the only time blurs of that mindset ever want to acknowledge the lesser known 
known or at least lesser talked about stuff that comes from Africa and its various offshoots within the diaspora is only when they see it in someone else's hands. When some white fantasy writer or Japanese mangaka takes interest in those concepts and they decide to craft a story or a character with it or even just create a power set that's based on it. Like it took a Japanese mangaka to make some of these black otakus and comic book nerds care about Ogun. It took another Japanese mangaka to make them care about Joy Boy. It's like some of us only care about the things that come from us when we see it through someone else's lenses. It's kind of like having a toy that you don't care about, right? You want to play with every toy in the toy box except that one. I mean, you neglect that toy to the point you are more than happy to give it away to someone else without a care in the world. Only then to start crying later on about wanting your toy back because now you see how much fun the other kid down the street is having with it. So many of us expect the machine to give us the media that's going to empower us and have a more transformative effect as if they would ever do that, knowing what that's going to lead to. Even if they give you a black show or movie here and there that's not total garbage, that's still just throwing you a bone. If I throw a dog a bone, I don't want to know if it tastes good or not. They know they can't starve you out completely because, you know, they still got to make money off you but they'll give you just enough to shut you up for a little bit. Not to mention, it's only a matter of time before they decide to pull the rug from under you by canceling the show. Now, if you're a 90s kid, I'm sure you remember back when Disney and Nickelodeon had hella black shows back in the day. Well, back in the day being the 90s and the early 2000s. But then what happened? As usual, they became drowned out and eventually dropped and less produced in favor of more hot shows. Remember UPN? The channel that had nothing but black sitcoms on it? Shit seemed like a fever dream at this point now, don't it? But see, that's the nature of the beast. They use you to build them up until they don't need your ass anymore. They'll use your creativity and ability to draw a crowd to them, then they'll steal from you, repackage it to make it look like it was their idea from the start, and then kick your ass to the curb. Think about it. You tell a joke about potatoes, they flip it and say tomato. You tell a joke about orange juice, they flip it and say apple juice. You give them living single, they flip that and make friends. If you can't see why we need our own everything pretty much if we really want to be able to have the type of media that we want and need then i don't know what to tell you bro but why we gotta have our own thing though and why we can't be on the same network as them though oh no no don't get it twisted you can go ahead and tie yourself to them if you want the choice is yours be it because you feel like you have to be connected to them to feel validated or maybe you just feel incomplete without them now sure working with them means that there'll be a bigger budget to do more with but using their money also comes with hella strings attached to it and i know that there's people who will say that it's not that simple to just do your own thing and there's a lot of red tape but you got to go through certain people and i'm like oh yeah if you're part of the machine of course you can only do what they allow you to do which isn't much if you want to be part of their game you have to play by their rules i'm not saying that it's cool or acceptable that they do things the way that they do them i'm simply saying that's who they are and that's who they've always been and you already knew that going in you already know that these people were never your friends to begin with and that they never had your best interest in mind and no matter how much ass kissing you try to do they only tolerate having you around so long as you have some use to them you already knew that those who came before you have also told you repeatedly but of course oftentimes the words of the wise fall on deaf ears the industry don't give a fuck about you but the industry couldn't make a dime without you. I mean, let's keep it a stack. Is the issue really that building our own is difficult? Or is it really that a lot of people just aren't willing to part ways with certain entities that they've been convinced they have to rely on? I'm just saying, don't act all shocked and appalled when you realize how much you gotta censor yourself and water yourself down to fit in with them because the real you just is not gonna blend well with their ideals. Also, don't be surprised when they leave you in the dust after they finish using you and your material to boost their shit up. So long as you wanna remain attached and dependent on somebody else's platform you will always have to watch him out you always gonna have to walk on eggshells every single step you take you have to move as if you're in danger of stepping on a claymore and you better keep it funny and you better not get too real with the shit that you spit in else they're gonna end up dropping your ass the same way super mario does baby penguins remember american gods remember a nazi one of the best characters on the show if not the best character bro got a little too deep a little too real with the messages message bro was spitting so much he was dampening the floorboards in that bit so guess what they had to get him up out of there. Fight Orlando Jones, a Nazi went with him, season three comes out, the show gets canceled. Ain't that some shit? There's also this very indecisive mixed signal thing that goes on again and again. And again, I'm not talking about all, but a lot of black nerds and black consumers of media in general have this kind of mentality. And there's various ways that these scenarios tend to play out. In one scenario, right, you got those who will be like, I'm not gonna support some shit just cause it's black, that's stupid. But then many of those same people will start crying tears of joy like reparations got approved 
when they take a character who was white in the past and then they make them black, like Ariel, for example. Talking about, hell yeah, I'ma see that shit just cause she black. Cause I, 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 got, I got daughters and nieces and cousins that need to see themselves on screen and feel represented cause representation matters. What? You even have artists who would draw black versions of non-black anime characters. And those will end up getting thousands of likes and hundreds of comments and shares within like an hour's time. Or they'll take popular cartoon characters and then, I don't know, ghettofy them with some shit and that'll get the same amount of attention. We'll even see things like black dudes crying on TikTok about them making a black Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Talking about how they finally feel seen and validated and feeling like they're a part of the story and all that. Now, after seeing all of that play out, right? How could you expect someone to not come to the conclusion that a lot of motherfuckers don't really want black characters and narratives but rather they just want black versions of somebody else's shit it's crazy how we'll say things like we're the innovators and the trendsetters and the most creative people on the planet and everyone loves to bite our style and copy the shit that we do which is definitely a fact like let's let's not play dumb here but then again not all but a lot of us will end up in the next breath celebrate some of the most creatively bankrupt material we'll celebrate stuff like race swaps and hand-me-down characters or we'll celebrate AI generated black anime characters that don't actually exist all as if this somehow marks the dawn of a new era within media for black consumers I mean shit you, you won't you won't find any of these characters from any story or nothing just some artificially generated images from a collage of artwork from various artists who've uploaded their work to the internet and nah I'm not trying to wage war on people that, that draw race swap characters and make AI artwork even though as an artist I got my own personal gripes with AI art or better yet I have gripes with people who make AI artwork and try to pass themselves off as an artist or even worse act as if they drew that shit and when i say creatively bankrupt what i mean is ideas and concepts that don't take much thought or effort to put together i'm gonna take this character right here who's not a black person and then redraw them as if they are a black person literally anybody could think about that when i say creatively bankrupt i don't mean that the artists that draw these pictures aren't talented i may not be a fan of the idea of race swapping characters of any race into any other race but i'd be capping if i said that the artwork didn't look good and i know there's some people that's gonna be like well if you think this type of stuff is so easy to do why don't you do it because i don't want race swap characters to be my reputation because whatever you get popular for whatever you end up building a platform off of the fan base you end up gathering from that is going to expect you to keep putting out the exact same thing that drew them to you in the first place so if you make content like comedy skits the audience that you built from that is going to expect you to keep on making comedy skits likewise if you build a platform off of making race swap versions of other characters the audience you built is going to expect you to keep doing that but then should you decide to make some original stuff chances are it's not gonna get nearly as much attention as the other stuff does i mean just imagine the disappointment right i'm looking around for black artists that make this type of artwork just to find something like this and realize it's ai fake it's fake that's what it is my point is at the end of the day all of that changes nothing the problem that many people complain about is very much prevalent you can spray air freshener over a pile of garbage all you want to that stench ain't going nowhere till you take the garbage out the house in another scenario you have people who will try to claim non-black characters or characters who aren't even human as black people it could be because they have a tan or because they have a deep voice or because they have some kind of off human skin color and, and they experienced injustice of some sort and therefore they're black coded because of it or even even if it's because the character has a black voice actor. Bro, you got some black Naruto fans who will try to claim the Uchiha clan as black people. As if there isn't a whole ass village full of actual black ninjas right there, clear as day. Or with the great pretender how cats will try to claim Abigail is black even though it's clearly stated that she's from fucking Iraq. But well, she got brown skin though. Okay, the black people got a monopoly on melanin or some shit? I mean shit, like we're not the only people on the planet that could possibly have brown skin. I mean these lists of different black female characters would just be like itching to claim Abigail. Meanwhile, this chick Dorothy right here was being shown all throughout season two. I mean even the whole Piccolo thing stopped being funny back in like 2014. I can't even fake laugh at the shit no more is so overdone every time there's always a list of black anime characters they got piccolo at number one type shit even when black characters have phenotypically black features as opposed to just looking like this guy but with brown skin you even got some black people who complain about that i'm pretty sure some of the people are a bunch of white people trying to act like they feel hurt by that shit but but there's also black people that be on that dumb shit too now, i don't like that they designed this character with a big nose or big lips as if no black person on the planet looks like that and no i'm not talking about this old minstrel show bullshit right here i mean actual big lips and big noses like they'll see a character that looks like this 
and will say that this is a racist depiction even though I'm pretty sure we've all seen several people that have features like this. Let's stop playing games bro because some of y'all be acting like there is literally not a single black person in the history of black people anywhere on the planet who has big lips or big noses or both. I mean shit, I guess y'all got so used to seeing black people that look like this that you don't forgot that there's black people that also look like this. If you see features that look like this and the first word that comes to your mind is ugly and undesirable and unattractive and you yourself are a black person thinking like that, it might be time for you to do a bit of uh, self-reflection bro because that's some wild shit. But this gives off the impression that they don't actually care about actual black characters. You know, characters who are black from the jump and were 100% intended to be perceived as a black person. What they really want are characters that they can insist blackness upon. Nah, never mind this actual black dude right here. Nah, I wanna claim that Japanese guy with the tan. Another scenario is how you have black creatives who write novels, right? Or they write comic books or make short films and stuff like that that are pretty much aimed at trying to make exactly what many people are supposedly asking for. But many of those who complained about not seeing people who look like them in certain narratives and genres are nowhere to be found when these people share their stuff to the various platforms and even black focused groups that are on those platforms, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But what those people seem to really be interested in are not having new and original stories to call their own. Nah, they seem to be more interested in narratives that have little to nothing to do with black people, all while ignoring the vast amount of content that's put out by black creatives. Or on the flip side, they do want to see more black narratives, just not the ones made by black people. They want to see that kind of stuff from white fantasy writers, from Disney, from Marvel, from Japanese mangakas, all because that's what they actually value and that's what makes them feel validated. When someone who doesn't look like them ends up creating a narrative with people who do look like them. You even got some black nerds who even take it to a point where they have these ridiculous headcanons of what and who a story is actually about. And I don't mean stuff like fan theories, no. I mean they will state their headcanon so matter of factly as if it's true and was 100% cosigned and confirmed by the creator of the story. Though it isn't. You got cats who say stuff like Dragon Ball Z is about the plight of the black man in America or that Attack on Titan is about black World War I veterans or some shit. I remember seeing this one post that said Dragon Ball Z was actually the creation of a black mangaka. Didn't even bother giving this dude a name. He was just a black mangaka who went to Japan and became friends with Akira Toriyama. But then later on Akira Toriyama stole his work and then got rich. <laughs> I honestly hope whoever made that post was just joking. Like, I truly hope they was just fucking around. But for all we know, in today's day and age, they could be dead ass serious. Especially judging from the stuff that I've seen within various blurred groups on social media, specifically Facebook, that I used to be in. Speaking of which, there are blurred groups, right? That have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of followers. And some of these groups are actually pretty cool with some pretty chill people for the most part. But then there's other groups, right? When you go in those groups and you see nothing but a bunch of fuckery gumbo. And the most irritating part is that the large following that some of these groups have could easily serve as a hub for promoting so many black indie creatives and businesses and projects, etc. I mean, the groups be having like 200,000 plus members, so it's not exactly an unrealistic expectation that at least 100 motherfuckers are gonna take interest and support those things. You know, and promotions don't even need to happen every single day. It could be like every Wednesday, Friday type of thing, where indie stuff is shared and promoted there. But instead of that, the stupid shit is what tends to prevail in those groups. Ignit shit, light skin versus dark skin shit, gender wars, black men and black women threatening to date outside their race in the hopes that they're going to spite their opposite sex counterpart posts that lead to a bunch of infighting and 500 comment long arguments between a bunch of self-hating motherfuckers until somebody ends up tagging the admin to come turn the comments off just goofy niggas being goofy groups like these could have easily been something better but instead all we get was madness madness and stupidity Shit, blur groups are some of the most irritating internet spaces to be on if I'm really being honest. Cause you go into those groups thinking it's about to be lit only to end up seeing a bunch of this. Not to mention when these groups end up getting numbers that get up to like the hundreds of thousands, it's like that shit really starts to go to their head after a while. All over the place you always have conversations about wanting to see some black such and such. Then you got black people within that group trying to promote their stuff. But then the admins of some of these groups be like, You got a pen. 
beat you. I wish the hell I would pay out to promote some shit just to end up with only six likes on that bitch after it's been up for like a week. Meanwhile, they'll gladly promote a bunch of other shit off rip. And they do it in the form of having constant conversations about this stuff, discussion posts, or making memes about it, which will make somebody curious and want to check that shit out. That's partially why I'm not a part of as many blur groups as I used to be. Collectively, I was in at least 30 different blur groups, and I left about 20 of them shits over the years from about 2015 up until now. And then we get to the people with the thousands of excuses for why they quote unquote can't support something. One of the most common ones being, I mean, I'm not familiar with that though. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck all that! I'm honestly about tired of that argument, bro. Cause when were you ever familiar with any of the stuff that you're familiar with right now? You knew nothing about Demon Slayer until you sat your ass down and you watched it. Same thing for Dragon Ball, Naruto, Bleach, Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia, Hell's Paradise, Jojo, Chainsaw Man, and so on and so forth. You weren't born familiar with any of that stuff. Hell, you ain't even know your own damn name until your parents told you. Like, I don't care how long you've grown up with something, all that shit was foreign to you until it became familiar. But apparently asking them to have that same energy for something else is just asking for too much but then they'll complain that they want to see something new so you want to see something new but you're not trying to get familiarized with something that actually is new make some sense out of that bro i'd rather them just be honest and be like i don't give a fuck bro i don't care about that shit for real i was just chatting like most of the people in that thread i would appreciate the honesty rather than them making excuses talking about i'm not familiar with that though because let some new manga that just came out start trending and watch them same motherfuckers be all over that shit trying to tell the whole block about it just because it's trending right now like hold up i thought you don't support things you weren't familiar with what happened to this conversation another mindset a lot of us got to get rid of is the mentality of not supporting something because it's not already popular you really got people that be like i mean i'd subscribe but this motherfucker only got like 200 subscribers bro i'ma wait till that shit hit at least 50k what the fuck people don't become popular because they want to be popular people have to make a person or thing popular imagine people like rdc world and caleb city were still at like 12,000 subscribers and you and like a million other people were thinking the exact same shit at the same time I i'ma subscribe to them when they get more popular as opposed to subscribing to them and getting them to a million subs you'd rather wait until another million people come along and do that you don't follow content creators because they're popular you follow them because they make good content the same thing goes with products you don't buy them just because they're popular but because you feel like it's a quality product that deserves you spending your money even if popularity plays some role in the way that you perceive something, it should not be the determining factor in whether or not you decide to give something a time of day. And then we get other excuses like, yo, why they charge this much, bro? But then you look at the price and you look at other people's businesses and how they charge for it, only to see that shit end up being the same price. Now, yeah, you do have people that overcharge the shit, but then you got other people that their prices are actually quite reasonable. So for these people, no matter how reasonable the price is, they're really complaining about the fact that you decided to charge at all. Like you got some people who think black owned businesses means that if you're a black customer then you should get some freebies or a discount i don't know what the fuck lovecraft country been teaching your ass but that's not how businesses work you don't get freebies and discounts because you happen to be the same race as the owners of the business what kind of shit is that y'all must think black businesses run on fucking black girl magic and black boy joy or some shit hell no that shit run on money just like every other business now i will admit there are a lot of black businesses that have terrible business etiquette egregious and criminally overpriced products and shitty customer service. You got people charging more for a product than what it's realistically worth. A 12 page comic book ain't got no business being $50. But not even Marvel and DC charge that much for single issues. Now see this right here, right? This right here is the omnibus version of the Akira manga. And the price for this single issue right here, right? This single omnibus book costs about, I'd say maybe $30 with tax. Something like that, right? Now with this many pages, I would say that that's a pretty fair price. But the entire collection though for all six books, and I got all six books right here. The entire collection for this joint costs about 150 something with tax, right? Which again for this amount of stuff i would say that that's pretty damn fair but you gotta be out your rabbit ass mind if you really think a comic book with this many pages in it right this little ass tiny ass bit of pages in it is gonna be worth spending 50 dollars on bro i don't give a damn if yusuke morata himself drew that shit i ain't paying no 50 dollars for just 12 damn pages bro but anyway despite the fact that there are a lot of janky black owned businesses let's not sit up here and try to act like that's how every single one of them operates see black owned businesses should be criticized and called out when some out-of-pocket stuff happens on their watch. I don't believe they should be above criticism or accountability. Black businesses should be held to a high standard because why the hell not? I mean, if you're not gonna approach your work with an attitude that says that you care about your business and that you're willing to produce the highest quality that you can and exhibit good customer service, then your ass ain't got no business having a business. But what I'm also saying is that every business, regardless of what color the owners are, should be held to them same standards. Cause some black people will give all the races a 
fast for disrespecting them and they'll just ignore it and pretend like it didn't happen then continue to give them their money but whenever they deal with a black business as if by way of a miracle they suddenly have the spine to stand up for themselves and be like you know what fuck y'all i'm not gonna continue to spend my money here and if you gonna sit up here and act like you don't even want me to be in this damn store or this restaurant to spend my money then i'm gonna just take my coins and i'm gonna bounce i'm saying keep that exact same energy with everyone that's regardless of where you are or who you're dealing with because to do otherwise and give others a pass for reasons to me that's no different than someone who is just selectively tough people who get loud and act hard with people that they feel like they can beat but whenever they deal with someone who might be a little bit too much of a challenge for them all that fake tough energy they had is nowhere to be found you know for example dudes that'll box a chicken to a power nap at the drop of a quarter but when they got to deal with another man now all of a sudden they want to be all civil and exercise diplomacy bitch ass nigga it is absolutely nothing wrong with calling out when a business is being unethical unprofessional or just straight up incompetent but to generalize black businesses in in a negative way so matter of factly Especially when you consider the fact that a lot of black people who have this mentality don't apply that shit to anybody else. You can always hear them say, this is why I don't support black businesses. But you will never hear them say, this is why I don't support Asian businesses. This is why I don't support Latino businesses. This is why I don't support white businesses. And it don't matter how many bad experiences they have with those groups. What they'll do is just shop at another establishment of the same type and they'll single out that one particular establishment that gave them problems. So if they got into some shit with the people that work at this Chinese food restaurant, they're not going to say, fuck y'all i'm not eating chinese food again no they'll just go to another chinese food restaurant like you have some black people that when it comes to being mistreated and being made to feel unwelcomed at these places they don't go the fuck you then? i'm gonna take my money elsewhere which is exactly what they should do and what they would do if it was a black business that gave them bad energy instead now nah, they'll take the mistreatment and the rejection as a challenge so their mindset is more like you know what I'm going to prove to you why I'm worthy to be a customer at your establishment. It don't matter how many times H&M calls them monkeys or how much the owners of these European fashion brands say that they don't like black people and don't want black people buying their products. That's not about to deter them from being patrons of their business anyway, because it means a lot more to them to prove that they can afford products from people that don't like them, thinking that that's some kind of a mic drop moment. Why are you so desperate to be with people who hate you? I mean, think about this for a second, right? An establishment tells you that they don't like you and they don't want people who look like you buying their products. So in in response you say oh you don't like us well guess what we gonna buy your products up anyway and make your ass even more money ha <laughs> ha yeah how stupid that shit sounds right that's how some black people think because they see buying their products as some kind of social status upgrade they think proving that they can afford to buy expensive things from people who don't like them is a dub when really it's a big ass l because who really won in that scenario the person who just spent their money or the person who just made more money another excuse often made is Bro, times is hard and I got bills and shit, bro. And ain't nobody trying to spend their money to make you rich, nigga. First of all, shut up. The only people trying to get rich off your ass are the people with the janky ass prices. The ones trying to sell you some $5 shit for $500. The ones trying to charge you $50 for a 12-page comic book. The ones who make some real whack shit that looks like they put little to no thought or effort into it and then want to try to guilt trip you into supporting them. The ones who become entrepreneurs but then try to talk slick about people who work 9 to 5s as if them very same people ain't the majority of their customer base slash fan base. But don't try to paint everybody as being on some get rich quick type shit. Some people are definitely definitely trying to scam people and overcharge you in the name of chasing the bag. Other people are simply just trying to run a business and hopefully supply demand. And once again, if you don't want to support something, you have no obligation to do so. Ain't no gun yet. Just simply ignore them the same way that you ignore the Hebrew Israelites that be yelling Bible verses into a microphone in the downtown area. But anyway, nigga, when are times not hard, bro? I mean, was all of us rich at some point and then we became poor all of a sudden? Like, did, did I miss that era? Like, when are bills ever not a thing? Times was hard when you copped your PS5. Times was hard when you caught them limited edition Jordans. Times was hard when you did all the things that you enjoy doing with your life. That costs time and I'm pretty sure a lot of money. Like listen bro, when people actually care about something, it don't matter what the price is or what state the world happens to be in at that point in time. They will pay whatever the price on the tag says. Even if they ain't got the funds for something at the moment, they'll make the intention to cop it later down the line at some point. If they ain't got time for something, they'll make time for that shit. You got cats that will pay for concert tickets for their favorite music artists, even if them tickets cost the same same price as fucking rent. You got cats that gotta be up early the next day, but if their favorite show is on and it don't go for like about another 30 minutes or so, they gonna stay up the rest of that 30 minutes and then they'll go to sleep. So if you got people who are willing to entertain any and everything else, but got nothing but a mountain of excuses for why they can't support something else, then I think it's safe to say that it's because they're not really all that interested or just flat out don't care about that something else. Even though they'll make essays worth of threads on the Bird app about wanting to see that something else. Now don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm in no way 
always saying that you should ever give up your last in order to support someone. Don't ever do no shit like that. I don't care how much you rock with a content creator. Hell, I wouldn't even try to guilt trip motherfuckers into giving up their last. If you got like $100, $200, and that's supposed to last you to the end of the week till you get paid again, then take care of yourself. What I'm saying is, if you don't want to support something, just be honest about that instead of bringing up a mountain of excuses that for some reason never seem to exist whenever it comes to anything else that you're more than happy to throw your time, money, and energy to, no matter how expensive it may be. And you already know we gotta address the whole, nigga, just because you black, that don't mean that we gotta support you just because we black and you black and you making some black shit too. Actually, you're right. You absolutely don't owe it to black creatives to support them just because they're black and they're making black stuff and you're black too. But if we're gonna tell the truth, let's tell the entire truth. Now, just like how just because you're black, that doesn't mean you owe other black creatives support. Likewise, Japan and Korea also don't owe you representation just because you complain about not seeing enough people that look like you within their media. It's a universal concept that applies to everyone everywhere no matter what side of the argument you may find yourself on. You don't owe anyone anything and no one owes you anything. Fair enough. And don't get it twisted, this ain't a situation of feeling entitled to support because, well, you black and we black so you should support us. Nah, it's more of a problem of a lot of us black people hearing, whether you're creative or not, hearing somebody complain about not seeing a certain thing. Then there's creatives who provide that exact something that you were looking for. And then the person who complained either ignores and passes it up without at least giving it a chance to see if they might like it or not, even if it's free. Or they'll just look at it and be like, alright, that, that's cool or whatever I guess, but I want such and such specific entity to make that stuff so it's kind of difficult to not look at the stuff and be like hmm i guess this is one of those the white man's ice is colder type situations you could be selling the exact same thing and a motherfucker will walk straight past your table and go to theirs and you like bro i'm selling the same thing though yeah but they selling it for a cheaper price though and as soon as you lower the price bro why you selling it so cheap that shit must be whack nigga I mean, ultimately, it's whatever. If some black nerds and black people simply just don't care about black narratives created by black people, that's fine. But you don't get to complain about non-black creatives for not putting a bunch of black characters into their narrative. Because at the end of the day, it's not their job to do that. Just like it's not the job of a chef to perform heart surgery. Another thing to keep in mind is that most popular black superheroes slash supervillains are not created, let alone owned by black creatives. The amount that are are on such a small list that you really gotta think about it. Aside from characters like Blue Marvel and most of the characters from the Milestone universe, there aren't that many. But when regarding all the popular black characters that are created by non-black creatives, I mean, shit, where do we start? Luke Cage, Falcon, Blade, Black Panther, Storm, Miles Morales, Spawn, Nubia, War Machine, Prowler. Point is, most popular black characters, especially from the big two, are not created by black people. Now sure, there's black artists and writers who have worked on many of these titles, but they didn't create them nor do they own these characters. Now, I'm not saying it's some kind of issue for a non-black person to have black characters, but what I'm saying is thinking that characters like them will ever completely embody the type of energy that you were hoping they would is basically just begging for disappointment. I mean, I know there's people that don't want to hear this, but if Marvel decides that they want to put Miles Morales in a skirt because they want to have him explore different avenues, they can do that. He's Marvel's character, and there's no law that says it's illegal for them to do so. Same thing applies to Black Panther and the rest of them if some writer comes along and has a mind to do so. Sure, we can complain about it, but we all know that they're gonna try to just flip the narrative and say we're being some kind of istophobe, or even if they decide to hypersexualize a female character who was never like that before and you complain about it. They'll just flip the narrative and be like, you just wanna control women's bodies and you don't want them to own their sexuality, or whatever the fuck Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, and Sexy Red fans like to say. When really you're just upset that they're messing up the integrity of what makes a character who they are. For example, right, if they were to portray Chris Redfield from Resident Evil as an effeminate pushover with low self-esteem, that would be some bullshit because that's not who Chris Redfield is. Now maybe some other character from a different series may be like that for real, but not Chris Redfield. If they were to portray Jill Valentine as the biggest Jezebel on the block, that would be some bullshit too because that has literally never been who she was at any point in time in any of the games. It might make sense for a female character from High School of the Dead to act like that, but it doesn't make sense for Jill Valentine to act like that. But at this point, we should know better about Marvel and DC. The fact that these days, almost nothing remains consistent about what makes a character who they are. Even if it's been established for decades, you could say, hold up, this, this character isn't like that. And then some new writer will come along and be like, well, they are now, so deal with it. The only thing you can really do is just stop buying the comic. Either that or support some alternate universe version of the character. Anyway, point is, so long as someone else is writing the story, 
you, the person who is not the author, call no shots. Now, if you were writing the narrative, then you get all the say in what happens and what doesn't happen. But see, the problem is that so many of us think it's best to leave the narrative in the hands of someone that we know damn well ain't gonna make it the way that we like it. Because for some reason, we think it's somebody else's job to create those stories when we're the ones with the ideas in the first place. That's like going into a white barbershop and expecting them to know how to do a bunch of black hairstyles. As if there aren't plenty of black barbershops all over the place, that would obviously be able to do all the hairstyles that you're looking for. Or going to a Korean food restaurant and getting mad at them because they don't make Caribbean food. Bitch, it's a Korean restaurant. Why would they make Caribbean food there? Like, I mean, imagine going to a restaurant and asking the chefs to make a dish the way that your mom makes it. Spoiler alert, they can't because they're not your mother. Even if they tried their best to imitate her recipe, you would still come out your face talking about, nah, that ain't it, y'all. As if the outcome wasn't gonna be obvious. Man, I wanna see more stories with black protagonists. I wanna see more black fantasy stories. I wanna see more Afrofuturism. I wanna see more black families that aren't dysfunctional. I wanna see more black horror stories. I wanna see more black love stories where black men and women actually like being around each other and they're not in a toxic relationship believe me i want to see all that good shit too but expecting a machine or expecting a legion of people from the other side of the world to end up doing that let alone do it any justice is just once again asking for disappointment i mean you really think the big two are about to start pushing out a bunch of black power couples and then let them stay together she I mean, first of all, the superhero community is full of 304s, bro. Ain't no loyalty out in these super streets. A lot of us were hype as hell when T'Challa married Storm back in the day, but then Marvel shut that down sometime later. And I guess the joke was on us thinking that they let that be something permanent. Miles Morales currently has a black girlfriend who was also a superhero type character. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. In fact, you got some blurs who couldn't care less about seeing black couples at all, be it with Miles or other black characters from Marvel or other popular IPs. Some of them just want that one black male or female surrogate character that they can feel like they're vicariously living through. Got motherfuckers talking about, man, fuck all that black love shit. Let Miles get back with Gwen. Let him get a swirl on and have that snow money, nigga. And they claim it's because they want to see white people get mad on the internet and collect some white tears, but I personally think that's just a bullshit cover up for what they really feel. I think the real reason is because they have a gross obsession with black characters being in interracial relationships, especially with white characters. Because in real life, they also have a gross obsession with black people being in interracial relationships, especially with white people. I mean, you got all these people on black Twitter who act like they have all this rage and all this hatred and vitriol and all this fucking smoke for everyone of the Caucasian persuasion. It's about to go back. I mean, come on, so let's talk about it for real. Cause I can't be the only one who feels like a lot of these posts and videos where you got some black people and even some non-black people who make all these posts and videos about how not a fan they are of all the palm colored people are just honestly some bullshit. Even the supposed anger that they feel about them feels phony. Am I the only one to see through this performance? Like with all these comments about white people smell like wet dog and having lice and they can't dance and they got no rhythm and they got no soul and the food is unseasoned. But despite all that shit, bet money that a fat ass chunk of these people are either dating or married to a white person. And the majority of their friends are also white people. A lot of them folks ain't nothing but a bunch of goofy ass actors playing the character. And then when you catch them slipping, they want to be like, come on bro, you, you know you can't help who you fall in love with. Nah nigga, the real reason is, you full of shit, you understand that? You full of shit. I'm just saying, all that old napkin American, clear people, pasty, male sapien, cave demon shit that they be talking is just for the internet bro. They don't mean none of that shit in real life. I'm so sick of these pasty ass male sapiens. With all that pink meat up on your fork bro, sis? Somehow I doubt it. I'm just saying, if they irritate you so much, why you keep hanging out with them? If they irritate you so much, why you laid up with them? Nah, son, you got it wrong. It's just the racist white people we don't like. Yeah, all right, just the racist ones? You sure about that? Because we know damn well plenty of y'all will be more than okay with giving even racist white people a pass, or even any non-black person. So long as you find them funny enough, or attractive enough, or black on the inside enough, or blacker than you, whatever the fuck that means. Like, let's not play stupid, bro. We know damn well, it's some black people out here that's just so damn crooked in the brain that if there was some triple k members out here right now and they look just like cats like chris evans and scarlett johansson you know damn well will be some black motherfuckers out here talking about hey look guys look now 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 i know how this sounds but but just hear me out real quick bro y'all know damn well every black person is not solid there will be plenty of these motherfuckers folding for their asses left and right like <laughs> y'all some sick motherfuckers
This is a sick Negro. It's honestly crazy and sad just how desperate some black people are for acceptance. To the point where some of them be out here feeling hella elated and damn near inebriated off of the basic acknowledgement and or affection. Because the second they see a white person who likes to hang around black people or they see a white person in a relationship with a black person, they be like, aw snap, <laughs> he like him some sisters. Hey, <laughs> she got a thing for the brothers. Bro, it's motherfuckers out here just straight up congratulating and damn near throwing a parade for white people for simply finding a black person or finding black people attractive. Children so easily amused. Like y'all are really a confused ass section of black people. Y'all don't know if y'all hate these so-called male sapiens or if y'all in love with them. Y'all know if y'all want to get the hell away from them or cuddle with them. I mean, outside of doing business and just being out and about, why do you willingly surround yourself with so many of them if they're as much of a nuisance for you as you say they are? Like, it's one thing to complain about racism and white supremacy and all that shit, but to talk about the way a group of people looks as if you despise it and it somehow disqualifies them from you finding them attractive, when in reality, you're actually attracted to them and their appearance plays a very big part in why you're attracted to them, is what I find stupid about this whole thing. This ain't got nothing with trying to run to white people's rescue and try to be their hero or any kind of dumb shit like that. I'm just saying, if you're gonna make a statement like that and say it with your whole chest, then I think your actions should also match what's coming out of your mouth. It doesn't make sense you saying things like you don't care about what they think about you, that you don't care about their acceptance, that you don't even want to be around them in the first place, when it's quite obvious that your actions, your energy, and your emotions say the exact opposite. That nah, you actually care a lot about how they think and feel about you. You actually do want their acceptance. You want them to like you, you want them to be around you, you want their friendship, you want them to be attracted to you, you want their attention, you want some kind of connection and relationship with them despite all the mistreatment and the rejection and the racism that other people from that group give you. Despite all that other shit that came out your mouth earlier about wanting nothing to do with them. If it bothers you to not be considered attractive and desirable by European beauty standards or the beauty standards of any race of people for that matter, that means at least to some degree that you actually want to conform to those beauty standards. Because of the fact that you want to be deemed as attractive and desirable by those very same people especially if you want to live among them you want to be down with them you want to be accepted by them you want to fit in if you didn't care what they thought and felt about you then it wouldn't bother you in the slightest when one of them comes along and says they're not down with the swirl talking about i don't give a fuck what they think cut the cap you give all the fucks because who complains about some shit that doesn't bother them there are black people who legitimately don't care or need a single crumb of acceptance or external validation and then there's other black people who need that shit about as much as a dog needs to lick his own balls y'all accept me Bro, please, can I be one of y'all? Like, I'll, for real, like, I'll be, I'll be a good boy. I'll be. It's like it's either it's either that they're putting on an act to hide their true feelings, or they have some weird ass fetishes that they think they're keeping under wraps by putting on this phony ass visage of pro blackness and outrage. Yeah, I'm so tired of all these white people that when I travel the world, I'm gonna specifically make my way towards all the countries where they make white people at, and then I'm gonna act all shocked and appalled when I see that there's racist white people in Europe too. Like I didn't already know that shit. It's some goofy ass dizzy ass white people that are the exact same way in a sense yeah i'm so tired of all these black people so let me take a vacation to the fucking caribbean so i can get the hell away from them well are you retarded it'd be some black people that'll say stuff like bro i'm not even black i'm just a human that happens to look the way that i look and you'll be like all right if that's how you feel then that's how you feel but then as soon as they experience some racism or what's otherwise known as that nigga wake up call all of a sudden as a black man in america I mean, bro, these are the same people who dead ass sit up here and just swear to God that they have absolutely no possible ancestral ties to Africa in any way, shape, or form, right? But will in the same breath sit up here and tell you that they swear that they must have some Japanese ancestry within their lineage somewhere because they really like anime and have a ridiculous obsession with everything Japanese. Damn, I always wonder why I like anime and sushi so much. I must be part Japanese. Or maybe you just really like anime and sushi. Crass ass identity crisis stricken motherfucker. Like, yo, you ever run into them cats who be some of the most Tom Dubois ass people when they're all giddy? and life seems to be going pretty smooth for them but then they want to try to act all pro-black the second that they get mad like i mean the only time they ever want to act like they own some pro-black shit is when they get in their feelings ain't the motherfuckers a trip y'all either try to claim pro-blackness or y'all will try to use pro-black talking points that y'all know damn well you don't actually agree with or believe in if you only care about black unity and solidarity and shit when it's convenient for you hey man looks like we the only three or four black people in this place maybe we should stick together but any other time your ass is like nigga I don't know you. You ain't really about that for real, bro. Because it goes like this. When they're pissed off, the white man is the devil. 
I'm blickety black, blacker than black, black, I'm black. But the second they're in a good mood, they're white people's number one ass kisser. They'll talk like they wish Caucasians would just vanish, never to be seen again. But the second they see a big titty, big booty white girl walk past them or appear on their newsfeed, or there's a white dude that got some rhythm or some hood up in him, they go from a wannabe Malcolm X, Khalid Muhammad, Marcus Garvey type motherfucker to, I apologize for my outburst. They claim to hate these so-called male sapiens with a passion, yet the second that a white person treats them with the most bare minimum, basic level of human decency. Gotta love white people, I don't give a fuck what you say, white people are friendly. Like yo, let a white person just simply smile at them and say good morning, or they sneeze and they say bless you, or they imitate some dance or recite some rap lyrics. In less than an adult second, they go from the white man is the devil to yo, did you just acknowledge my existence? You were invited to the cookout. Damn, so all y'all really wanted was just some attention from them? That was pathetic. Because a minute ago, they were the colonizers and the culture vultures and the cave beasts and demons and all that shit. Oh, now they kinfolk all of a sudden? You love these motherfuckers now? These motherfuckers sound just like them cats that'll call somebody like DJ Vlad a culture vulture, right? Which, I don't have a problem with them saying that about him, because I don't give a fuck. But I'm just saying, it's crazy that they'll call him a culture vulture, and will say stuff like, hey, Yo, this motherfucker be setting black people up, and, and he be stealing and profiting off the culture. He the enemy, he the colonizer. Basically saying a bunch of stuff that implies, yeah, we see this nigga as an op. But the second that Vlad offers them a chance to come up on his platform, these same motherfuckers go up on there, cheesing their ass off. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, Vlad. Looking ass. I stab you niggas with a fucking spoon. Like, you know what's crazy? I've had people tell me that I sound cold hearted when I say that not everyone deserves to be taken seriously. But honestly, I don't see it as cold hearted at all. See, I can't take someone seriously whose worldviews are tied to their emotions. You know how damn fickle emotions are? They are very inconsistent things. And if a person's worldviews are tied to their feelings, then their worldviews are also inconsistent. Like, they could be feeling a certain way right now. And then they'll say something, right? And then 10 minutes later, they'll be feeling a completely different way and they'll say something that contradicts what they just said 10 minutes ago and no it's not because they've grown and they've gained a different perspective or understanding of something but because their feelings changed like I said, when they're angry, white people are the devil, but when they're in a good mood, they're their number one ass kisser. Yesterday, it was, Yo, Dr. Umar need to mind his business and stop trying to tell black people who to be with. Uh, the dumb white folks ain't never did nothing to me. I don't care about the movie Get Out. But then as soon as some Jonathan Majors type situation happens, Damn, maybe Dr. Umar might have had a point. Hey, I think we need to stay away from these Beckys and Tylers, bro. Damn, maybe Get Out was trying to tell us something. Like, dog, which is it? Either you're for something or you're against it. You can't have it both ways, dog. And it's funny because at the end of the day, a lot of cats who say this stuff don't really mean it. These are just temporary feelings, assuming that these feelings were even real to begin with, that are only gonna last for about a few weeks to a month and some change maybe. After all that's said and done, it's back to regularly scheduled programming. And it ends up begging the question, why bother even saying any of this stuff when you know damn well you obviously don't mean or believe any of it? For views, for clicks, for the sake of the trend, because that's all this is to a lot of black people. Not all black people, but a lot. This pro-black, black black solidarity stuff they be talking, is not like it's an actual belief system that they have. It's not a way of life for them. It's not their culture. It's not part of who they are. It's nothing more than a trend. And trends have always been, and will always be, nothing more than a temporary thing. And this type of stuff right here is exactly why I say emotions cannot be trusted as logic. You know how many times I've been pissed off as a kid and my parents asked me if I was hungry, but I was way too damn pissed off to acknowledge my appetite. And because I wanted to stand on business for the most dumbest reasons, now it's 2 a.m. and my stomach growling, because I let my damn feelings get in the way me getting my grub on. Emotions are not to be taken as solid logic, bro. If a black person is gonna consider themselves as pro-black, then having such a worldview should not be adopted as an emotional response to being heartbroken or rejected by white people or whatever other group of people. Because being pro-black or pro-Asian or pro-whatever you are is about simply wanting what's best for your people. It ain't got nothing to do with hating other groups of people or wanting supremacy over other groups, despite what some morons on the internet would try to have you believe. Being pro-black ain't no different than saying you care about your own family. Caring about your own family before others doesn't mean you don't give a damn about people outside the family. It just means that you want to make sure your own family is taken care of first before you go worrying about anybody else. Like for example, Black Panther, he does care about people outside of Wakanda, but Wakanda comes first at the end of the day. Simple set of rules. Now, like I've said many times, I'm in no way, shape or form trying to generalize black people in a negative way. I'm not saying that every single black person who voices their gripes with white people is a snow shoveler on a download. I'm not saying that every single black person is low key full of shit. I'm just saying a lot of motherfuckers are low key full of shit. And y'all making all the official tissue, real deal, legitimate motherfuckers 
motherfuckers look bad. I mean, the crazy thing is, when you get so used to running into people who are full of shit, it's very easy to get the impression that everybody's full of shit. Because if you're about something, then it doesn't matter how you feel, what day of the week it is, what season it is, or what the weather's like outside. You're gonna stand on what you're about regardless. See, the way that I feel about black people having our own media and narratives and actually being in control of them is something that I genuinely stand on. That viewpoint is not predicated on whatever the machine puts out. I don't just feel like we should have our own narratives only when Disney or Marvel or some other big corporation does something that pisses me off. If the machine puts out something that's worthwhile, good on them. But the mission is still the mission. Now, going back to the blur groups. I mean, look into a good amount of these blur groups and you'll see pictures of them posting like a white girl with a fat ass or some shit talking about hey dr umar just gonna have to understand <laughs> or they'll post a picture of some white male characters or white male celebrities like henry cavill and chris evans and chris hemsworth talking about which one of these white boys i think would want them some chocolate or they'll make some polls about which white characters or celebrities should get an n-word pass i think tom holland should get an n-word pass because because he's spider-man right and he done married him a beautiful black queen i think he one of us on the inside for real I fucking hate you niggas <laughs> Uh, I swear, I hear, I, I hear y'all say stuff like, I love us for real. I honestly couldn't disagree more, bro. I mean, because I'll hear y'all say that, and I'm like, nah, not all of you. Like, I legit can't stand you old tap dancing motherfuckers. There's no scenario where I can imagine you not being irritating. Like, if you could imagine the pain of a toothache but in your ball sack, that's the level of mental and psychological agony that these Bojangles ass Negroids end up bringing with them everywhere that they go. I swear, the pain is like the feeling of a migraine, a toothache, a stomach ache, a paper cut, and banging my toe on the side of a table was all just redirected to my balls. And it hurts. Anyway, they'll talk all of that white, pasty, pale, unmelanated, thin-lipped, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, cave demon rhetoric just to start simping over literally every motherfucker who looks like this the very next minute. Talking about some Zam Zaddy. <laughs> Sounds to me like y'all like all that blonde hair, blue eyed, thin lip, pale, pasty, unmelanated cave demon shit. No, we just like the characters with white hair. Right. Just the hair? I guess the skin part is silent, huh? You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. Ain't nobody lying. Y'all like all that shit for real. Y'all just like to pretend it's ugly during those moments, I guess, when you get in your feelings or some shit. Y'all got that same energy as them childish ass dudes that'll try to holler at a big chick, right? And then when she tells him that she's not interested, this motherfucker get all in his feelings talking about, well, fuck you then, bitch. Nobody wants your fat, funky, ugly ass anyway. Nigga, you wanted her fat, funky, ugly ass just a second ago. Don't try to act like the motherfucker you was thirsting and drooling buckets over suddenly repulses you. They didn't accept me, so now they're ugly. <laughs> Yo ass would have been more than happy to let them spit in your mouth and do all kinds of nasty, depraved, ungodly shit with your ass just 30 seconds ago. Why you bringing up old shit? And before anybody goes asking, yo bro, why do you care who people like or date though? Make no mistake, I don't. I'm just simply making a point about all the goofballs who want to get up on MF Doom's internet and start spouting a bunch of viewpoints and ideologies that they obviously don't actually believe in or live by. I honestly couldn't care less about interracial couples. Man, I'm not Uma Johnson. So long as you're not on some anti-black men or anti-black Black women type shit, you ain't got nothing to worry about. The only interracial couples I can't stand are the ones who are exactly about that, or even worse, social media interracial couples. Y'all some of the most cringiest, irritating, newsfeed invading ass people to ever have internet access in a camera. Hey yo, I'm about to teach my white spouse how to fry some chicken and wear a do-rag. <laughs> Today I'm going to teach my white wife how to make a fufu. No, stop, just calm down, don't do it. Just listen to them go on the tirade about how supposedly fed up they are with the cauliflower people and you be looking at them thinking, you in a relationship with somebody white, aren't you? And then all of a sudden you end up seeing them with their white girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife type shit and you be looking at their ass like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I fucking knew it, son. You can tell yourself I'm making this stuff up, but go join some of these blur groups and give them about three to six months, and you'll see for yourself eventually. I honestly believe a lot of these blur groups are just clubhouses for all the swirl-obsessed black people to congregate so y'all can be a bunch of anglophiliacs in secrecy. Keep telling yourself I'm lying, but the facts about this type of shit always come out eventually. I'm just saying, a lot of the cats in these blur groups are literally just that dude preach from Don't Be a Menace, bro. Can you tap that white girl for me? My milk of magnesia. Ha 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 ha.
I'm just telling the truth. And just one more thing that I'm just so sick and tired of seeing in blur groups and on social media in general is this argument about black male nerds wanting nothing to do with black women or black female nerds wanting nothing to do with black men. All we ever hear back and forth. No, it's the boy's fault. No, it's the girl's fault. Black girls never liked it me. Black boys never liked it me. This is why I don't date black women. This is why I don't date black men. Like that shit goes on and on and on for hours on end. And these arguments never come to a civilized conclusion. It just goes from every Everybody listing off whatever bad childhood experiences they had and then it just turns into a bunch of 30 plus year olds throwing insults and displaying how they're still bitter about some middle school and high school shit. You got people on both sides just refusing to deal with these issues in a way that's a lot more productive as opposed to taking the most childish finger pointing approach. Like bro, it's a whole ass canvas. But motherfuckers only care to look at that little corner piece of the picture that they want to look at. It's almost as if they're scared, right? That if they end up looking at the entire picture, they're going to be forced to realize just how wrong they are about a lot of things. And with the massive egos that people have nowadays, in addition to being as emotionally and psychologically immature as they are, motherfuckers hate to admit when they're wrong, bro. In fact, they are so committed to believing their truth that they don't even give a shit about the truth anymore. And instead of acknowledging the possibility that they're wrong about at least a few things, they rather just resort to minimalizing and gaslighting the living shit out of each other. Look, whatever you claim that you went through, it didn't actually happen because I wasn't there to see it. Things only happen when I'm there to see them happen. And if I didn't see them happen, then they never happened. Even if what you say happened to you did actually happen, I really just don't care enough to acknowledge it because at the end of the day, it's all about me and my problems. However bad you think your problems are, mine are way worse than anything that you can imagine. So you can stop being so fragile and sassy. I swear like this type of backwards ass thinking right here is one of the main reasons why a lot of black people will never heal, they'll never evolve, and future generations of black people are going to have to keep on dealing with these stupid ass problems and arguments because the generations that came before them were just insistent on being so damn petty and wanted to insist that because they have pain and trauma and emotional baggage that they have the right to misdirect and project their anger and problems onto other black men or black women who have done nothing to wrong them in any kind of way and are not the cause of whatever issues they have. And their mindset is, well, look, if they're not willing to be my emotional and sometimes physical punching bag, well, then they can go eat a dick because they're being real selfish and weak instead of just tolerating my bullshit till they reach their breaking point. And here's the thing. Since it's quite clear that the anti-black men and the anti-black women brigades will never get along, how about this very simple solution? You got past trauma and emotional baggage and bitterness and you want nothing to do with black women? Fine. You got past trauma and emotional baggage and bitterness and want nothing to do with black men? Fine. Both of you, go your separate ways, leave each other all the way the hell alone, don't even talk about each other. Feel free to date and hook up with whoever's willing to deal with your ass and on behalf of every single black male and female nerd slash geek and black men and women in general who are sick and tired of these arguments being brought up every three months as well as hearing this retarded ass rhetoric that nerdy black men don't like black women and vice versa for nerdy black women all because there's some black people who are actually like that who'd rather be with white people or asian people or any other non-black people please do us all a favor as well as yourselves and shut the fuck up for god Cause I'm telling you, we're about as sick and tired of hearing these pointless ass arguments as we're tired of DC milking the death of Batman's parents. Like, how many times are y'all gonna keep bringing this shit up for real? Nothing new is ever gonna come from this. And it's quite clear that motherfuckers are just too emotionally and psychologically immature to have a constructive and civilized conversation about things like this and come to a proper conclusion. Cause you got people on both sides who just wanna point the finger and pretend like their side is just completely innocent of everything. As if none of the bad energy has ever come from their side and if it did, well, no, it was only like one or two people but your side did it like a thousand times though but then again accountability is such an antiquated notion in this stupid ass age that we live in and motherfuckers just love to sprinkle the whole woe is me perpetual victim mentality on everything like it's onion and garlic powder and you want to know the craziest and somewhat funny thing about both the anti-black women and anti-black men brigades for two people who supposedly hate each other so much y'all can't seem to shut the hell up about each other you ever notice that you could be scrolling on your news feed on ig right and you see a page that's all about celebrating black couples right you know basically it's content about black men and black women in good wholesome cool ass relationships and building families with each other and then you got these old unhinged goofballs that want to jump in the comments talking about i mean like that's cute or whatever i guess but i'm so glad that i divested years ago with my non-black spouse and you'd be like i don't remember asking you a goddamn thing these motherfuckers be swearing that they're so happy talking about the grass is greener over there but i'm starting to think it gets boring as hell on the other side because for some reason they always tend to hop their asses back over the fence 
events to see what's happening over here like anytime there's a discussion on social media about the problems that exist within the community like the relationship between black men and black women and what can be done to fix it and make sure that the problems don't continue hey these goof ass niggas come talking about no nah, fuck all that y'all should just divest like we did <laughs> i ain't asked you nigga shut up <sighs> Anyway, long ass tangent over. Back to the whole black couples and fiction thing. Now in the past, T'Challa and Storm was the black power couple. Now some people are hoping that Blue Marvel Adam Brashear and Photon Monica Rambeau are gonna be the next black power couple. But even if they end up hooking up, it most likely ain't gonna last that long. It damn sure ain't gonna last as long as Reed Richards and Sue Storm type shit. Marvel will let Peter Parker have a wife and a child with a happy marriage before they let that shit pop up. I mean, just watch how they'll have some extremely convoluted bullshit reason as for why Blue Marvel and Photon go their separate ways. Not to mention, once again, there's blurs who really couldn't and care less about that they just gonna be like bro this shit is whack bro why they gotta be with another black person let them get they swirl on bro you capping bro there ain't no black people that think like that for real nigga i wish i was making this shit up again just go look at a lot of these blur groups especially on facebook and this is the exact kind of activity that you're gonna see in a lot of these groups not all of them because like i said some of them joints are cool but you're gonna see a lot of that bullshit in these types of groups even though they're presented as black spaces <laughs> I guess these are just black groups in name, theory, and aesthetic, but not so much in practice, huh? I remember a few years back when a white female cosplayer won a cosplay contest at BlurCon. But what I couldn't understand is why the girl got so much backlash and not the judges. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I recall correctly, the owner of BlurCon is black. The judges of the cosplay contest, I'm sure, were also black. The girl just simply entered the cosplay contest, and the judges voted for her. So, how is that her fault that she won? I mean, it's not like she voted herself in and, and it overruled whatever the judges wanted to happen it ain't like she paid the judges off nah you even had motherfuckers talking about white privilege and all that and i'm like shut your stupid wrong lines wrong scene motherfucker like how the hell does white privilege exist within a black space or a supposed black space wouldn't the term black space imply that black people are the ones in charge similarly to how black owned businesses means black people are the ones who own the business so wouldn't that mean that white privilege can't exist within a black space unless you wanted it to exist there i let them in asshole i practically handed them the keys i swear oftentimes it's the same motherfuckers that be all over the place itching to hand out cookout invites but then want to start crying when it blows up in their face so i'm out damn bro we can't have nothing motherfucker you invited them what are you talking about these same motherfuckers be the ones who be aching to give out n-word passes to their white friends or their non-black friends then want to get mad when they start to actually use it for real talking about bro you taking it too far i said you could say it like three times shut your stupid you fucked up when you decided to make them feel comfortable enough to say that shit you know damn well a lot of them been itching to say it since they was knee high to a grasshopper now that you don't gave them the go ahead you think they're not about to ride that bitch to the wheel falls off that is entirely your dumb ass fault congratulations you played yourself. And of course, you know, we got to address the whole crabs in the barrel mentality that some cats have. Because that right there seems to be the only damn train that ever shows up on time consistently. I mean, you got gatekeeping motherfuckers who try to keep other black people from getting through the door because they think they should be the only one. Or maybe they think there should only be a certain amount of black people who get through the door. Or maybe they want to feel like the exceptional Negro amongst everyone else. Like the ones who are currently in position should be all that there is. And it shouldn't be any new faces. I mean, you even got some black content creators who have a pretty big platform with followers in the tens or hundreds of thousands who complain about the lack of representation in whatever medium but but they don't even care to promote lesser known content creators to get them at least a little more notoriety now of course they don't owe it to them to promote them but if you're complaining that you don't see enough people who look like you doing a certain thing or something like that but then you don't try to help content creators who are like that with less followers so that y'all can have some kind of networking built with each other from there it starts to sound like you just saying what you're saying for the sake of saying it but you don't actually believe the shit that's coming out of your face or even those pages that post artwork from black artists you know those pages that'll repost someone's work but won't tag the artist in it the same way that they'll repost skits but won't tag the person that made the skit and you want to know what's crazy even if the artist puts their name on the work these motherfuckers will crop it out or blotch it out and then repost it and then get the nerve the unmitigated gall to get mad at the people who call them out for that shit. Another thing that makes it harder for lesser known creatives to be seen is of course the algorithms. It's no secret that the algorithms on these platforms do be shitting on us a lot of the time, but we can't act like it's just one or just the other. Oftentimes, it's the algorithm being a bitch. Other times, there's people who will act like they don't see your stuff. It don't matter how frequently you upload. Even people who claim to be your bro, your ace boom coon and all that shit, they will silently dismiss your content simply because it's you who made that shit. Even if the stuff is good, 
they will ignore it just because it's you who made that shit. They won't like, they won't share, they won't comment. Basically nothing that will increase the likelihood of viewer traffic hitting your posts. They can miraculously see everything else you put up. All the memes, maybe some videos of some twerking BBWs, but not your shit. I'm talking about, oh damn, I ain't see that. And you be like, motherfucker, I tagged you. Or they'll be like, hey yo, yo, tag me in that shit. I I'm gonna check it out and give you some feedback when I get back to the crib. Then a whole two weeks go by and you be like, you guys fucking homeless or something? Cause I ain't get no feedback. None. I mean, it's either that or they can only see your work when you post something controversial. You know those people who never seem to comment on your post for anything else, but they always magically pop up to disagree with something that you said or shared that they didn't like. That's how things be with some of these black art groups and even some of these blur groups too. Now sure, there do be thousands of people posting within these groups, but how much does that matter really? I mean, YouTube has millions of content creators, yet I bet that doesn't stop you from seeing recommended videos from channels you don't even follow. Anyway, you got cats that'll post some really wholesome artwork of black people and it'll get like maybe 10 to 20 likes over a few hours but then let's say somebody else draws a picture of like the universe having a cosmic coochie with stardust flying out of it and that'll get like 10,000 likes before the day is over don't get me wrong i'm not knocking the artists that make that kind of stuff i'm just saying y'all gets hell of attention on it but the second that you post a piece of artwork that tackles certain controversial issues within black society all of a sudden everybody can see it including the people that normally ignore you now all of a sudden the comment section is just flooded with a bunch of angry reactions and angry comments and ridiculous accusations i ain't gonna lie i went through some shit like this myself personally one time in this one group and usually i would post comedic artwork right but then i made a short little series of comic shorts talking about some bad past relationships that one of my characters went through in this one post i made specifically all of a sudden that post blew up in about less than 30 minutes after i uploaded it that day like i'm getting notification after notification after notification after notification like heart beating out of my chest looking at all these angry ass comments is talking about wow this is so ashy who hurt you oh look another black artist who hates black women motherfuckers in the comment section trying to drag me because of the message they insist i was trying to push i'm out here thinking that in the eyes of black women i just became public enemy number one out this motherfucker i mean yo these people dead ass had me feeling like i just committed war crimes out this bitch I'm getting accused of being anti-black women despite the fact that i often depict black women in my artwork in a positive and likable way but of course the motherfuckers who need to have a nemesis don't care about any of that shit. They just want to fight. Motherfuckers in the comments talking about they should have never gave you niggas crayons. Now, of course, after a while, I started to clap back because now I'm getting tired of this shit. Like, hold up. First of all, why don't you motherfuckers ever seem to notice when I post anything else in this group? Like, here's the thing. I don't mind being hated, but if I'm gonna be hated, let me be hated for something that I actually did or I actually said. I don't play that false accusation shit. You're not about to have people looking at me all kinds of crazy because you said some shit about me that ain't true. But I want to shout out the legion of black women in that group that came to my defense and checked everybody that was accusing me of all that noise. Of course, there was fellow black men defending me too, but I really want to shout out the women because I swear they pulled up on some Avengers Endgame type shit because they actually followed my work and they was like, hey, back your asses up. He doesn't make artwork punching down on black women. If you actually looked at his work, you would actually see that he has black women as main characters and they're attractive and they're likable. It's just that a bunch of you motherfuckers are in your feelings over this one post. Now, I will admit, I could have written the comic short a little bit better. Even some of the people that was defending me saying I could have did a little bit better with it because, you know, it was a bit sloppy which yeah it was but see the thing is it wasn't an official piece of work it wasn't something that was meant to be for print or for sale it was more like a draft idea piece so of course i'm not gonna put my foot in the joint i'm sure if you're a black artist who made artwork that touches on controversial topics within black society i'm pretty sure you've gone through this at least once or twice because apparently we're not supposed to talk about these things and it doesn't seem to matter how you say it it's the fact that you said it in the first place but anyway this whole thing where black characters and narratives become more prevalent and more commonplace is definitely definitely possible. It's really all about how badly the people want this to jump off and how many are willing to get behind the idea to make it a reality. But if you're one of those people who don't really care about trying to be part of the process that brings about that change, like I said, that's entirely your choice. But you're not exactly helping to fix the issues that you're complaining about. This is how I know for a fact that not everyone who complains about the problem is actually serious about fixing it, let alone actually wants the problem to be fixed. A lot of people complain just for the sake of complaining. That's why when you come at these people with a solution, they look at you like you got three eyes on your head. You ever listen to your homeboy complain about his girl? Yo, I swear this bitch ain't shit, bro. All she do is stress me out and belittle me. I don't get no kind of respect from her all she does is make me feel miserable bro and you be like so then kick a trifling ass to the curb and get a better girl <laughs> but I love her bro. Then shut the fuck up. I mean like there's a lot of talk about the problem but not much talk about solutions to said problems. There aren't a lot of doers amongst those talkers. Again, 
Not everybody who complains about the problem actually wants the problem to be fixed. They just want to talk about it because it gets them clicks and it gets them likes and retweets and all that other shit. But they're not exactly trying to help change the situation. See, the reason why the people who are fake mad about this lack of representation don't really want things to change for real is because they won't have the excuses that they have now. Because see, when you know better, you do better. When things change, you can't remain the person that you used to be. When you get in shape, you got to be consistent with working out. When you start a business and trying to get on your entrepreneur joint, now sure, you don't have to clock into a 9 to 5 anymore. But guess what? You also can't sit around and do nothing all day either. You got to keep that business running, otherwise it's not going to make money. Some people don't want to be part of the building process, just a celebration. And then there's others who don't want to help the solutions come to fruition because then they won't be able to say, well, the reason why we try to claim non-black characters or the reason why we make black versions of non-black characters is because we don't have much representation. It's going to be pretty hard to use that argument if there's hundreds of thousands of different characters to choose from. Hell, even millions of different characters. But even when, not if, but when there ends up being a countless plethora of original black narratives and characters to choose from in regards to the whole representation argument, you're still gonna have some blurs wanting black versions of non-black characters. Cause at the end of the day, they only see validity and value within non-black characters, especially white characters or white looking characters. In addition to that, they only see validity in black characters that are created and owned by non-black creatives. Cause see, for these people, their sense of validation can't possibly come from within. It has to come from an external source. Cause the internal could be given all the support, all the affirmations and all the praise and then some. But ultimately they only care what the external has to say, which is why they take being rejected by the external the same way one would take being disowned by their family. Unless something comes from somewhere else, they see no value in it because they only value something if it comes from somewhere else. I mean, keep it a stack. How many of y'all honestly believe Black Panther would have done the same numbers had it not been tied to Marvel, let alone the MCU? I'm talking about it has zero connection to Marvel in any way, shape or form. It's its own separate universe, but it's still the same movie, the same story, budget, production quality, actors, all of that stuff with only slight changes that don't really break the movie. Do you think it would have still made the same bank? Personally, I don't think so. I believe it still would have broke even, but I don't think it would have made the same billions it did. I mean, Blade was a hit, but most people didn't even know who Blade was, let alone knew that he was a Marvel character when they first saw the movie back in the 90s. You could say Wesley Snipes having the star power he did was one of the main draws for the movie, and then the reputation for the character that he played was built from there. I mean, y'all can feel free to discuss your own opinions on that in the comments, because I can't really say that there's a right or wrong answer on this topic. But anyway, like I said, you can make whatever kind of artwork, praise whatever kind of artwork that you want, but making black reimaginings of non-black characters or even celebrating those things doesn't change the reality of the matter. All that does is provide you with a shot of dopamine, a very temporary sense of gratification and satisfaction or validation. But the situation remains the same. You know, artists can make as many black Goku, Gojo, Luffy, Naruto, Ichigo, Saitama drawings as they want. But at the end of the day, these characters don't look like that for real. And just for the record, this doesn't apply to black people who cosplay as non-black characters. Okay, black people cosplaying is just black people cosplaying. There's no rule that says you have to physically resemble the character that you're dressing up as. It's a costume, not an accuracy competition. So anyone who says you can't cosplay as a character because you're not the same race as that character, need to shut their asses up before they get hit with one of these. Because I bet money these hypocritical ass people are cosplaying as someone that they share absolutely no racial, ethnic, and cultural heritage with in the slightest. But want to come out they face talking about, you can't cosplay them because you're not the same race. Bitch, you not even the same race as the character that you're cosplaying. Shut your smeg my breath ass up. And like I said at the start, nothing of what's being said applies to the blurs and black media consumers who actually do try to help this whole situation change. Those who support Kickstarters, share links, leave comments and feedback, make reviews, etc. There's YouTubers like Nerd Soul and Blurred's Eye View and Black Master Donchi who do things just like this with indie black comic books and manga quite often, along with some other people who I'm unaware of as of right now. But things like that go a very long Long way and are the very thing that helps this kind of movement to continue. You got black creatives all day every day putting out their work on various platforms, much of it for free 99, thinking well seems like there's a bunch of black people demanding this exact type of stuff so might as well try to supply that demand right? But here's the crazy part, you know who ends up showing up mostly for what they end up supplying? A bunch of everyone else. Now by no means am I saying black people don't show up cause that would be nothing short of certified graduation cap. Now, I'm not even saying that it's bad to have non-black fans and patrons. In fact, to only want black supporters just isn't a feasible option as of right now because the whole blurred thing is still very much a niche category
category among black society. I'm just saying there's at least a little bit of sadness that comes with seeing that your intended target demographic ends up being in the minority when you were hoping that they would be at least half the audience. But I guess you gotta chalk that up to it is what it is. So what's the conclusion to be drawn from this? That there really isn't that big of a black audience for the types of narratives being demanded? That said black narratives aren't marketed as well as they should be? That it's an algorithm type situation that gets in the way of all that? Or does it mean that the generation of black people who are gonna show up in wave after wave after wave after wave for this type of stuff simply just aren't around right now? Or maybe they are, but right now they're still kids and they won't be adults for like another 10 to 15 years. So it's just not much that they can do from their current situation. Personally, I'd like to think it's a combination of all these different things and none of them are 100% the reason. Cause I wanna believe that there's still a chance that this whole renaissance of black narratives and artwork can still turn into something massive. That maybe the population of current gen black nerds just isn't as big as future generations will be. The ones grown up in an era where comic book movies, video games, and anime are a lot more popular and mainstream than they were 15 years ago simply just haven't gone through the fires of being told that they're weird or quote unquote not black or that they're trying to be white for being into that kind of stuff. Or at least they're not going through it as much as millennials, gen x, and the older half of gen z I guess. Things for them are a lot easier nowadays than they would have been had they been born like 30 or 40 years ago. Now yes, there's racism, and yes there's a bunch of other obstacles that stand in the way of a lot of things for us. But what else is new? None of that changes the fact that this issue right here is one of those things that could definitely be a whole lot easier if we really wanted it to be in a more collective sense. If the cooperation was a lot stronger, things were running a lot smoother and I'm sure we'd be a lot further ahead with this. Hell, the conversations that we have on this very specific subject matter probably wouldn't even be brought up as much as it often is. Now, I'm not saying that there's zero support and that there's zero unity. I'm saying it's not as prevalent as it should be, especially with the amount of people who consistently rant about this topic. You know, complaining about the objective being difficult ain't gonna make it any easier. And telling ourselves that it's impossible to get this done damn sure ain't helping anyone. But they don't give us a space. So make one, the fuck? When they don't give you a seat at the table, you don't bring a folding chair. You build your own table. But but then they're gonna say that we're excluding them and that now we're being reverse racist. So tell them to eat a dick. I mean, they was perfectly fine not letting you have a seat at their table, so don't go feeling sorry for them and falling for their puppy dog eyes and, and the fake hurt feelings and the crocodile tears because they don't have a seat at your table. Don't let their hypocrisy go unchecked. And damn sure don't go falling for that bullshit that they try to pull when they be talking about Martin Luther King wouldn't have won it. Shut up, bitch. See, black people creating their own spaces has been done several times throughout the decades in various forms. I mean, come on, son. If black people can create Black Wall Street, and not just one, but several across the US, what is it like, 100, 200 plus of them joints? All across the US during a time period that was undeniably a hell of a lot more dangerous and difficult for black people, then I'm sure we can manage a few nerd spaces here and there. I mean, come on, son. I mean, if creating Black Wall Street was quantum physics, this shit right here is gym class compared to that. No one's expecting you to build the Burj Khalifa out this motherfucker. But even if we create our own spaces and make our own thing, then those people will still troll us and they'll leave racist comments and tell us that we don't belong anyway. And? Let me tell you something, bro. Them same people that you talking about are the most entitled, intrusive, and nosiest bitches on the planet. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to share the same space as them or you try to make your own space. If there was an Olympic event for minding your own business, these motherfuckers would be in last place every single time. These same grip-blowing subhumans simply hate the fact that they even sharing the same oxygen as you. The hell you about to do? Hold your breath to make them feel better? Fuck all that! The fact that you even exist is their reason for not liking you. It doesn't matter how nice you are or how much you try to get along with them. Motherfuckers that want trouble don't care about you trying to enlighten them. They're not looking for you to teach them something because they don't know any better. No, their mindset is literally, I don't want peace. I want problems always. All they want to do is serve the purpose they exist for, which is being garbage. Understand niggas is going to hate you regardless. Get that out of your head, that fantasy world where niggas ain't hating on you. You might as well build some shit any old damn way because they're going to feel the same about you whether you make your own stuff or not. But building is not easy though. Obviously. Building something that's meant to outlast you long after you're gone from the world is never easy or fun. Or at least most of the process isn't fun. And guess what? It ain't supposed to be. Because if it was easy and fun building something, you would never take it as seriously as you 
you should. When something costs you nothing, you don't value it as much. But when something costs you a lot, you're gonna value it like it costs you a lot. You won't care too much if you accidentally drop a free sample of food at the supermarket. But let you be walking up the stairs with one of these joints right here, and you trip on a step and drop like $30 worth of food. Oh, best believe you gonna wanna break some shit. If you know you had to bust your ass to get to a certain level of success, you're not gonna take that lightly. Your energy is gonna be hella different. You're gonna take things seriously. You're gonna be a lot more careful of who you allow in your circle. You're gonna be careful of how you spend your time. All because you know it can take years to build an empire, but only one day for that shit to collapse in a ruin like this if you're lacking. Now, we can sit up here all day talking about the difficulty level of the game all we want to, but in this day and age, we have people who are putting in that work to make the changes that they want to bring to fruition. In the age of RDC World having DreamCon, their own convention, that's almost, if not as big as Comic-Con by this point, and DR Shitajio, a black-owned animation studio in Japan. I'm not saying pretend like it's not difficult, I'm just saying that we're starting to run out of excuses at this point as to why we can't do something about it. Acknowledge the difficulty. Acknowledge Acknowledge the pain. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, push-ups are painful. But if your goal was to do 100 push-ups and you're only at 60, so keep going. Down, something being difficult does not mean it's impossible. This shouldn't just be just one LaShawn Thomas trying to get things done or just one Carl Jones trying to make shit happen. There should be dozens upon dozens upon dozens of names to choose from. There needs to be more to black animation than just the boondocks or black dynamite. There needs to be more out of the box type black stories that aren't just about the struggles of being black in America. Now, I'm not saying that we can't or shouldn't speak on real world issues that we go through within fiction, but it shouldn't be just that. And the reason why is because there's more to us than just suffering. Even if the story takes place in the hood, mix it up and do something different with the content. That's why I like the movie They Clone Tyrone, because even though it takes place in an urban setting, they put an interesting twist on it. I mean, RDC has a manga slash anime coming out that takes place in the hood, but there's superpowers and other elements involved. It ain't just hood niggas doing hood shit. I mean, we love to admire Japan for how they're not afraid to make some really weird stuff that looks cool at the same time though, right? But why do so many of us give black people with that same kind of energy the side eye like Japan is the only one allowed to make weird cool stuff? I mean, so Japanese creatives get to do a whole bunch of out of the box material, but black creatives gotta stick to the generic template because that's what's familiar. I mean, do y'all not see how much of a chicken finger at every restaurant ass appetite that is? I mean, I done posted my artwork to certain black groups and got comments like, why are these women so tall? Why these characters got superpowers? Why these monsters look so monstrous why is the story so weird motherfucker are dances and food the only things we're allowed to be created with if the demand for all these things is a real demand and not just a conversation for the sake of practicing japanese then we need to prove it by putting the money where the mouth is and just for the record supporting doesn't automatically equal money there are a multitude of methods to supporting something that doesn't involve opening your wallet liking commenting giving a follow sharing links word of mouth all the things that people do for popular shows whenever they make fan theories characters their analysis videos, discussions about the episodes, making memes, all that stuff. Often do people underestimate what all that does for a creative, especially if you're one of those creatives that likes to search for online discussions about your IP. Leaving comments and shares is enough to make a motherfucker feel motivated to keep things going. All this stuff, that'll take less than five minutes. Cause by doing all that stuff, word ends up spreading around and that brings in even more eyes. Now, unless somebody is trying to sell something or they're asking you to support a Patreon or a Kickstarter, there's no reason to assume automatically that support means money. As for black creatives, we gotta make sure we bring in nothing less than our A-game. Now, if you're one of those people who just does the things you do as a hobby, then that's fine. But for those of us who intend on making a career out of this, we got no other choice but to go hard. Let's not just admire what Japan does when it comes to their media. Let's take a page out of their book and bring that same energy. Let's take what we do seriously and not be on some half-assing type stuff talking about some, you know we don't take nothing serious, bro. As if not taking anything seriously is a flex. And it's not just with art, but with business and everything else. You know, that whole thing about not taking anything seriously is a very self-destructive character flaw that a lot of us need to do away with. But anytime we talk about us as a group being on some self-improvement type status, you gonna have those people who wanna talk about respectability politics and say, y'all just trying to impress white people. And I'm like, first of all, shut up. Second, nothing that I'm doing has a damn thing to do with trying to impress or win the approval or acceptance of white society in the slightest. Third, if 
anybody has that goofy ass mentality is probably people like you because like for some reason anytime black people talk about becoming the best version of ourselves that's the first place that your mind goes automatically y'all probably those type of people that be like hey everybody get your act together the white people is watching us let's not act like a fool in front of all these white people which is undeniably wild as hell bro hey why are you reading all them books and working out so much it don't matter how smart you is and how in shape you is them white folks is still just gonna see you as just another nickel so because white people aren't gonna praise you for moving differently you don't see the point in upgrading i mean answer this why is it that you only seem to care about how you look when other groups of people are watching you so basically you're trying to say that your self-esteem your sense of self-respect and self-worth is all based around what white people feel about you damn bro i honestly can't relate honestly that tells me that one you don't care about what you see when you look in the mirror and two you damn sure don't care about what other black people think about you because when it's just black people around you feel like oh shit i guess the coast is clear to act like we ain't got no damn sense like if you don't see how sad that mentality is i don't know what to tell you though i mean if you want to champion the idea of black people being in a state of inadequacy basically because you've grown accustomed to that and you think life is just supposed to suck ass for black people then that's your business but don't try to act like something is wrong with other black people who want a higher quality of life and want black people as a collective to be something more not because we're trying to impress white people and get them to respect us and like us more but because we know black people have the potential to be something more it ain't got nothing to do with trying to emulate or impress white society or gain their acceptance and validation it ain't got nothing to do with not using slang anymore it got nothing to do with pulling yourself up by your bootstraps type shit nothing to do with looking down on black people who didn't go to college and don't have 20 degrees under their belt nothing to do with trying to be perfect and flawless because perfect people don't fucking exist it's all about trying to be better for the sake of being better itself because the potential to be better is there call me crazy but i want to see black excellence for real for real i don't want to see some corny ass symbolic stuff that ultimately means nothing in the end and see i know myself well enough to say that even if white people didn't exist i'd still think the same way because like i said it has nothing to do with them at the end of the day i don't view them as some kind of an apex or golden standard to aspire to because they're not but still you got some people who don't even care about all that they just want to champion the idea of black people being the worst versions of ourselves because i don't know maybe they've grown to like that shit personally i honestly think that people like y'all are agents sent to coddle and enable current gen people who think like that as well as convince the next generation that it's okay to think like that i'ma call it right now bro it's a conspiracy anyway we gotta take what we do seriously we can't be half-assing things especially if we want people to spend their money with us whether it's visual arts music filmmaking fashion or even if you want the culinary side of the game you're making sculptures right that people would pay hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars depending on what kind of cake it is right you can't be making something that looked like you threw it together at the last second and then sat on it if you want people to spend that kind of money with you black people are more than capable of making top tier high quality stuff this is not unheard of we shouldn't have to go outside the community in order to get some high quality stuff because of the stigma that now nah, we can't go to black people them motherfuckers never want to do it right that just doesn't sit right with me if anything going outside the community for something should be an alternative option not the default there's black people who actually want to support other black people but unfortunately or at least currently there's a lot of bullshit that they gotta swim through before they run into somebody that's the real deal and most importantly this thing this whole mission is a group effort it's not a one-man job we need to create the media that we want to see if we want to see those things as badly as we say we do but then again nobody has to do anything we could just all just do nothing and spend another 20 years wondering what if or just continue to settle for the same old hood movies and ratchet reality tv shows wishing and hoping that somebody in japan will just randomly get the urge to make a story about black people or some shit we could establish a dynasty that will last a thousand years or we could collapse into nothing which brings us back to the overall topic of this rant hood movies are not the issue it's the lack of a counter narrative why do they keep making hood movies and ratchet reality tv shows because a large amount of their target demographic likes to watch that stuff hey yo why they got so many of these shows out with black people being hypersexualized and fetishized bro well the way i see it yes there's a lot of non-black people who are into stuff like that but there's also a faction of black people who like that type of shit too i mean listen you got non-black people who have fetishes for black people and there's some black people out there who are more than happy to feed into those fetishes i'm like dog you got cats out here that's into stuff like race play and slave play so I highly doubt seeing that type of stuff in a TV show is gonna bother them. Hey, chill, bro. You know we don't kink shame over here. Well, I do.
why there's so many movies about black dysfunctional families and dysfunctional black relationships there are a lot of black people who want to see stuff like that because that's what they like that's what entertains them that's what interests them and that's what they relate to now if those people cared about seeing black people in sci-fi and horror and fantasy and a bunch of other stuff they be giving those types of narratives the exact same energy that they give everything else the machine is going to put out whatever has a massive enough audience and whatever's going to make a bunch of money be it movies or these rappers who make the low vibrational music that they make they're going to put it out so long as it continues to make millions or more accurately billions you will have people who will say that they're tired of seeing black shows about drug dealing and black people murking each other left and right. They'll say that they're tired of black trauma porn like slave movies. But like I said, everything has an audience. Stuff like 12 Years a Slave, When They See Us, Them, BMF, Snowfall, Power, etc, etc are always going to be made years from now. Even some of the people who complain that they're tired of seeing this type of stuff will still tune in to watch it. And the machine is going to continue to put out stuff like this until there's just enough people who's willing to put their foot down and be like nah to hell with all that shit we will not watch another motherfucking slave movie we will not be giving our time attention or money to watching any more black trauma porn and that's that and no i don't mean just protest this stuff for like a quick five minutes i mean going forward until the message sticks that no there is no market among black people for black trauma porn movies or tv shows for that matter we don't ask for those shows they just make the shows and then put them out even so when they make content like that they advertise it and they put it out on screen you and many others end up watching it consistently and then they realize oh shit i guess there really is a market for this type of stuff that along with the revenue generated in turn gives them the incentive to continue to make more content just like that because of the fact that there's an audience and it's making hella money now if your argument is well we watch it because they put it on tv you are indirectly taking some form of responsibility for why narratives like this are continuing to be pushed out by the machine no one can forcefully sell you something one can only make a sale if someone is willing to give them their time and money. Just because they're selling cigarettes don't mean you have to smoke them. You don't drink poison just because you're thirsty. Just because they put this stuff on TV doesn't mean that you're obligated to watch it. There are literally thousands upon thousands of channels on TV, yet you choose to tune into these kinds of shows. And blaming hearing other people talk about it and wanting to be part of the convo due to the fear of missing out is no excuse. At the end of the day, you still chose to watch. Now, something I've come to realize or more so accept is the fact that black trauma and dysfunctional narratives in the media will more than likely never cease to be a thing. There's an audience for everything and yes, a lot of black people are part of the audience for these very same narratives. Now, like I said the real problem is the severe lack of counter narratives better yet positive counter narratives the scales tip way too far on one side. It's kind of like hip hop and R&B back in the day. Now sure, there was still the dirty, dirty, nitty gritty stuff, but there was still the option of artists with more tasteful, positive music. Now, there are black movies that aren't about trauma, but black trauma movies tend to be the more prevalent narratives over the others. Now, peep this, right? Not too long ago, I saw this Japanese movie called Mother. It's about a single mother who carts her son around from place to place. She's a gambling addict, an alcoholic, she sleeps around. She always got a new boyfriend every two weeks, never pays back borrowed money, uses her son to garner sympathy from people. She beats her son, often neglects him to the point of starvation while prowling for another man that she hopes will be the one that keeps her this time. Basically, just an all-around dude doodle butter ass mom only spoiler i'll give is that the movie does not at all end on a positive note in fact it's just depressing and infuriating as hell but i mentioned that movie to say this not every japanese movie let alone asian media in general is like that there's shows and movies within various genres to choose from depending on what you want to watch if you want to see an action movie a comedy romance drama adventure horror sci-fi fantasy etc etc there's something for that now if you want to see movies like mother there's a section for that type of content but most of their content isn't just trauma 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 ratchet dysfunctional debaucherous sad shit like one movie could be about a man reuniting with a high school girlfriend another could be about a female chef competing against a rival female chef in a cooking tournament another could be about some dude with an alien possessed arm fighting shape-shifting aliens another movie could just be about a bunch of high school delinquents duking it out to be the strongest within their region long story short their media isn't just one dimensional one tune there needs to be a surplus of positive and creative black counter narratives to the black trauma movies as well as the hood movies and the ratchetness and the dysfunctional debauchery and there needs to be heavy support for all these counter narratives if they're going to stick around for the long run that way when future generations complain about being sick and tired of seeing slave movies and dysfunctional black families and relationships they'll have the luxury of choosing from a plethora of alternate things to watch not every narrative has to be on some super deep think piece type stuff there can be some turn your brain off popcorn movie to be tier type material here and there but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try harder to bring 
and quality stuff too. Black media can't just be all spectacle and no substance. Some things can be silly, but not everything can be like that. If everything is just party and bullshit type status, then black media becomes nothing more than just mindless garbage. Just like how you can't eat junk food all day every day. Yeah, it may taste good, but if you keep binging on that all day every day, it ain't gonna end well for you. Everybody else has their own corner within media. See, with black people, it's more of a kinda but not really type of situation. And see, we have to have our own corner where we're the ones controlling our images because image does in fact shape our perception of self. If you see characters who look like you being portrayed as nothing but pathetic, weak, cowardly people, you're probably gonna either hate your own image or you're gonna start to think that that's how things are supposed to be whenever you see a character that looks like you on screen. But if you see characters who look like you being portrayed as strong, resilient, reliable, honorable, someone who stands on business, see now you have a standard that's been created. Now you have a role model and an example to live up to. And see this is with both media as well as real life. But to see black characters be portrayed as pathetic and weak as the status quo will make people, especially the youth, look at it and be like, yo, is this it? Like, is this really all we have to look up to? Why is it that we don't have the badasses and the cool superheroes? Why is it that all the weak ass whack motherfuckers gotta look like us? See, black trauma is not all there is to our stories. To think otherwise is the equivalent of thinking that black history starts with slavery. Cause no the hell it don't. That shit was a chapter of black history, not the prologue. There's thousands of years of amazing things that black people did long before going through any of that. Our media can and will be better than what it is right now. But see, black media has to be the shit to black people first before we can worry about the rest of the world liking it. Cause Japan is definitely a fan of the things that they produce. And you can tell by how seriously they take what they do and the amount of effort that goes into it. They look at their own stuff and be like, yo, this shit is fire. And the rest of the world is like, yeah, I agree. We gotta have that same energy when it comes to our own stuff. If we wanna have the media that we want, we gotta be our own biggest fan first. Cause, cause how you gonna expect somebody else to think that your stuff is dope when you don't even think it's dope? Something else that I'm sick and tired of hearing is that our stories don't translate well overseas or that they don't appeal to a broader audience. It's bullshit. This cat's overseas rocking with the fashion sense, the dances, bro. They even imitating black people all the way down to copying the hairstyles, bro. Like, I don't mean just getting their hair done the same way. No, I mean, they are getting the texture of their hair altered just so they can rock a certain hairstyle. And of course, there's also the music too. You telling me that manga from all the way out in Japan with characters that don't look like us or come from the same heritage or even the same upbringing can have stories that resonate with us on multiple levels, but you think the same thing can't happen from our side like black culture is popular culture you can't tell me no one wants to hear our stories just say that you don't believe in the mission that you don't believe in the work as far as studios go the reason why they tell us that black culture quote unquote doesn't sell is because in truth they actually see huge potential but they don't want your ass to see or believe that shit because they know that in the likelihood that the idea is successful they can receive the mass majority of the profits and give you just a little piece of your own shit. I mean, think about it. Chappelle show made way more money than what the studios thought it would make. I'm talking hundreds of millions. And then they tried to give bro just a little piece of his own shit. With Friday, it was doubted that that movie was ever gonna be successful by the studio. And Ice Cube was willing to finance that joint out of his own pocket. But then the studio was like, nah, bro, how about you let us finance it? That way, if it doesn't do well in the box office, we only lose just a little bit of money. Friday did hella numbers at the box office made nearly 30 million dollars which is way more than the 3.5 million dollar budget and guess who ended up pocketing most of the profits not ice cube and them that's for damn sure they know for a fact that our ideas and culture are highly profitable otherwise they wouldn't be using black people slang in damn near every commercial and advertisement that you see nowadays yeah i'm not even gonna lie i've been asked yo why so many of your characters black and see the crazy thing is i was expecting someone to ask me that dumbass question because from the black creatives that i know it's happened to them too from what they've told me but the wild part was that it was a black person that asked me that shit. I checked. At the end of the day, if black culture translates to other parts of the world, the same thing can easily happen for black media. Now, maybe it's a matter of marketing and not marketability that gets in the way of that. Now, sure, there's plenty of Japanese people who don't care for that type of stuff, but there's also those who do. Like, there's literally an entire subculture in Japan that's dedicated strictly to black culture. You look at stuff like Samurai Shampoo and Cowboy Bebop, and you can tell there's heavy influence gathered from cultures outside of Japan. The same thing with Bleach. Yo, you listen to the soundtrack for Air Gear, you'll hear all kinds of influences of hip-hop, funk, jazz, reggae, soul, rock, R&B, etc. 
etc. Then you got Afro Samurai with its very obvious hip hop influences. If you think people in other parts of the world don't indulge in media from outside their country, I don't know who the hell you kidding bro. There's a whole ass Japanese dub of the Boondocks. Unfortunately I can't find it for myself, but it's out there. And the reason for why something will be dubbed in another language is because people in countries who speak those languages want to watch it, which is why a lot of anime is dubbed in English for western viewers. So needless to say, Japan is listening. Even if you make something with a very specific target demographic in mind, that does not mean that people from outside that demographic can't or won't find it appealing. During this whole rant vid, I've been talking to and about black people specifically, yet I'm pretty sure there's still going to be some non-black people that'll hear something that I said and maybe it'll resonate with them in a certain kind of way. Happens all the time. I mean, cats like Malcolm X done said plenty of things that even non-black people heard them and they was like, damn, that's a pretty good point. Stuff like Sailor Moon was obviously made for a female demographic, yet there's still a bunch of male fans of Sailor Moon. Dragon Ball was obviously made for a male demographic, yet there are still female fans of Dragon Ball. And you know what, to all the black comic book creators slash mangakas, whatever you want to call yourselves, out there who have this mentality of, well, I'm not about to have a bunch of black characters in my story because that's just not marketable or it won't get published in Shonen Jump. If you don't want to have black characters in your story, fine, your comic, your choice. But saying that it's not marketable is really just a weak ass excuse that's just not going to work anymore because that's a lie. As for the whole, well, it would never get published in Shonen Jump, your chances of getting published in Shonen Jump is highly improbable and virtually impossible because for starters, you're a foreigner. Second of all, even Japanese mangas have a hell of a hard time getting noticed by Shonen Jump, let alone published. And third, there is a plethora of publications outside of SJ like SIG, Shogoku Khan, Yen Press, Hakusensha, Kodansha, Viz, Image, Dark Horse Manga, Tokyo Pop, and plenty of others. Stuff like Attack on Titan, Fire Force, Vinland Saga, Blue Period, Parasite, Akira, stories that have a massive audience and are highly successful. Dumb joints come from Kodansha, not Shonen Jump. I mean, they may fit into to the shonen genre, but they're not from that publication. And since I know that there's people who are gonna ask, are you doing all this talking about making our own narratives? The fuck is you doing to be part of the solution, nigga? Do you support any of these black independent artists you be talking about? And to them I say, yes, I am. Now, on the chance that you're one of those people who's just being facetious, suck my but to those people who are genuinely curious, I've been creating my own comic books for a minute. Stuff like writing and world building and, and honing my skills to have an art style that I'd be satisfied with when I put the comics out there. My intention is to debut my first comic book called Prodigies in about sometime during 2024. I won't give a specific date since every time that I try to give a date, some BS happens and I don't end up showing something at the same time that I want to. Now, as for whether or not I've supported black indie comic book creators, Yes, I am. Not as many as I'd like to, since, you know, I gotta get my money up a little more before I can buy more stuff from indie creators. So far, I've copped several comic books from Teflon Funk by Stefan Mateo, and the soundtracks produced by Fat John. I copped the art book for the comic book Trill League by Anthony Piper, which I'm pissed off about because I lost the digital file in my last computer that just went stupid for no reason. So now I gotta purchase that joint all over again. I wanted the physical version, but by the time I got to buy one, he ran out of physicals and I just got the digital. I also copped another manga called Unrivaled by Tyrone Motley, which, I have the digital version, but I'm definitely going to cop the physical version. And I also backed the Kickstarter for Giallo Gumbo by Johnny Quatre. And I also got the digital comic for that joint. But I'm also going to get the physical version for that joint because personally, I just prefer physical comic books over digital. I've supported other black creatives. I've even done fan art for some of these joints. And I, I might or might not redo some of them because I made these joints back in like, what, 2015? And, and my style is a lot different now. So I may or may not redo these art pieces. Moral of the story, I mean exactly what I said. But when I get my subscribers up to about maybe 10k subs, what I want to do is make a compiled review of a bunch of or more like make a recommendation video of all the black indie projects that I've supported and are a fan of assuming that it's something that I'm aware of and it caught my interest now like I said our media can and will be better than what it is right now but like with everything else it's not going to come to fruition by us just wishing for it it's up to us to make that happen the goal is only as impossible as we want to convince ourselves it is these three key components need to pull off stuff like this that being a team of people people qualified to get the job done efficiently, an audience that supports the work, and of course financial backing. That's whether it's
it's in the form of crowdfunding or being sponsored by a company or a celebrity. Now, there are, of course, a bunch of other steps, but those are some of the main ones. And I think this should go without saying, but you don't have to support every single black story that comes out. Number one, because it's just not possible, even if you were rich enough to support literally everything that's out there. And two, people have very specific interests in very specific genres and stories. Everything is not for everyone and everyone is not going to like everything. You don't have to support a slice of life or horror or a spy thriller story if you prefer a detective mystery type story. You don't have to support a sci-fi or an action adventure story if you prefer a fantasy story and so on and so on. Also, us having our own media doesn't mean that now you have to abstain from consuming content from anywhere else. Black people having their own media, their own novels, shows, video games, cartoons, comic books, animes, and movies doesn't mean that now you can't watch anime and movies that come out of Japan or anywhere else in the world. It just means that now you have your own media and there's no need to beg to be made a part of somebody else's. That's what it means to have your own bakery in your own neighborhood. There's a difference between going to another bakery in another part of town because you just so happen to be in that part of town versus having to travel 10 miles to get to that bakery because you have no other options. And in addition to building our own, right, that also means we're going to have to create our own sets of rules and values with how we do things. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of separating from one system if we're just going to continue to perpetuate the ways that that system operated on and just end up being just a black version of them underpaying our employees and hoarding all the wealth and all that evil shit. And let's not just build but also protect what we build because if we think we just gonna build something and be left alone to our own devices <laughs> she See, this entire thing is more so the beginning of a new path for black media. So as par for the course, it's going to be an ugly and bumpy road. And this may come as a disappointment to some, but if you stick around long enough, you'll see that it goes without saying that a lot of us black creatives are sure as hell not going to get along with each other. And it could be for a various amount of reasons. Could be because of ego. Motherfuckers don't want to stick together and cooperate with each other because everybody want to be the head nigga in charge. Or maybe some motherfuckers just have zero loyalty and they're just out for self. It's gonna be some cats that won't like me simply because they saw this video and maybe they strongly disagree with some points that I've made. Well, maybe something I said struck a nerve. Don't get me wrong, it's fine if some of us are just bound to be enemies. It is of course a way of all things. I mean, we just see things differently. We have different beliefs and value systems. We come from different worlds and we just will not see eye to eye on a lot of things. And not to mention that some people are just a little too psychologically and emotionally immature to come to a disagreement on something yet remain friends. It's almost like the second y'all get into a disagreement, even if it's something so ridiculous and petty, all of a sudden, now y'all add out for the rest of your life. It's real out here, nigga. Nonetheless, you can't expect to get along and be best friends with everybody out this bit. We got our own cliques, our own circles, and those are the people that we're gonna end up building with. You think every Japanese mangaka gets along with each other? Hell no! But regardless of whatever kind of beefs and whatever kind of issues may arise between black creatives, the mission is still the mission. The goal is not to only create our own space and our own lane, but but ultimately to end this argument, to end the convos of, damn, I wish we had stories where black people go on these kinds of cool adventures, to the point that decades from now, movies like Black Panther won't be all that big of a deal. It won't be praised for being a well put together black movie as if it should be a surprise that black people could cooperate and make something amazing like that. It'll just be another good movie. Now, like I said, this is the last time I'm ever gonna make a video on this topic because the overly repetitive nature of these arguments are honestly exhausting and terrible for our mental health bro and i honestly advise other black people who agree with the points that i've made to also not waste their energy arguing with motherfuckers on this topic we can't keep wasting our time and energy trying to talk sense into motherfuckers with selective hearing the more time and energy that we waste trying to get through to them the less time and energy that we're gonna have to put into our work let's just worry about those who are of like mind and move accordingly from there can't save everybody can't take everybody with you that's just the way it is bro anyway that's my two cents let me know what y'all think and we can chop it up in the comment section peace